the entrance antiphon, six days before the Passover, when the Lord came into the city of Jerusalem, the children ran to meet him. In their hands, they carried palm branches and with a loud voice cried out, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you who have come in your abundant mercy. O gates, lift high your heads, grow higher ancient doors. Let him enter the King of glory. Who is this King of glory? He is the Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you who have come in your abundant mercy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me scoff at me. They mock me with parted lips. They wag their heads. He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me. O my help, hasten to aid me. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him, and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to Matthew One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him, one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, from now on, I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you new in the kingdom of my Father. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again, My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand, when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. 
While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one, arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi, and he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father, and he will not provide me at this moment with more than twelve legions of angels? But that you, that, but then how would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the high priest's courtyard. And going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses had come forward. Finally, two came forward who stated, This man said, I can destroy the temple of God and within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him. Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him while some slapped him, saying, Prophesy for us, Christ, who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, You too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that, he began to curse and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look to it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priests gathered up the money, but said, It is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After consultation, 
they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why that field even today is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet, and they took the 30 pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor who questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas, or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message, Have nothing to do with this, that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole co cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to be crucified. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself. So he is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now if he wants him, for he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is calling for Elijah. Immediately one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening, and they said, Truly, this was the Son of God. There were many women there looking on from a distance who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus, he went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this impostor, while still alive, said, After three days I will be raised up. Give orders then that the grave be secured until the third day, lest his disciples come and steal him and say to the people, He has been raised from the dead. This last imposter would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, The guard is yours. Go, secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. As we enter Holy Week with Palm Sunday, it's more technically referred to as Passion Sunday. In the three-year cycle, cycle A, cycle B, and cycle C, on Passion Sunday, one from the Synoptic Gospels is read, we're in cycle A, so it was from Matthew's account of the Passion. Next year in cycle B will be Mark's version of the Passion, and then in cycle C, Luke's version. And on Good Friday, it is always the Passion according to John. In John's Gospel, the Passion account my brothers and sisters, when there is a Mass without a congregation, it just enters in a simple way. And the opening entrance antiphon that includes Psalm 24, lift high your gates, and in it, a beautiful way, also from Psalm 118, that sense of even the children with branches cut from the palm, even the children went out for Jesus' triumphal entry. So last night at the vigil, all of the palms were blessed. All of the palms in that account of, from Matthew's Gospel of Jesus making that triumphal entry into Jerusalem and all the people singing Hosanna, the promise of what the prophets had foretold. In a beautiful way, that beautiful Hosanna, it is Hosanna to the Son of David, Hosanna Filio David, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, the King of Israel, Rex Il Israel, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in excelsis. We realize all of that praising and yet realize the fickleness, the fickleness of the human heart and that crowd who would later condemn him, yelling crucify him. Our Jesus wept 
over Jerusalem, but wept over the people. It wasn't just the events of sin and sin from Adam and Eve all the way down to the present. It was the condition of sin, our fallenness, that he would come. So the passion, as saints and mystics would meditate, would realize all of the passion in all of the Gospels is not only the beautiful events that led to our Lord's redeeming, beautiful, selfless act, his one perfect offering to his Heavenly Father, it was also the fulfillment of all of Scripture. It was the fulfillment of all of the promise that God had made through the prophets to his people. I won't go through each one, but in a beautiful way, even that Passover that he shared, he was instituting that new covenant of his body and blood, but it would recall the Passover, God leading his people with Moses. In that Passover meal, they would always identify as the people that had been exiled, but then led to the promised land. Jesus would be the new Moses leading his people to the new paradise. In all of that, even in the Garden of Gethsemane, meaning olive press, we see that legend had said that the olive tree was the tree of life in the center of Eden, and that it was a date tree or fig tree that would have been the tree of knowledge, but that in what had fallen in Adam and Eve would be restored by our Lord in his passion in that garden of olive trees, when he would be the one from a tree himself would pour out his life that we might have life. All of this, even that play with Judas and the 30 pieces of silver, an event that actually happened as part of fulfilling, but even that would hearken back to Genesis 38, when Jacob's youngest son, Joseph, envied by his older brothers, was sold by his brother Judah they had put him in a cistern, and then he was drawn out, but sold for 20 pieces of silver by Judah, his brother. Judah and Judas are the same root word in that name. In all of this, my brothers and sisters, we see salvation history unfold, but in that event, our Lord is the fulfillment of all of that. It is said that some of the saints and mystics would be drawn deeper into not only an appreciation, but an awareness that this is also the reality of me. As Christ made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, we begin Holy Week, he makes his triumphal entry into our space, into our locale, into our hearts, if we are receptive. With palm branches, but with also hearts made ready, let us sing praise to the King who comes, like children and those who first welcomed him. But let us also realize we identify also with that crowd who had yelled for him to be crucified. Another beautiful kind of image, almost a play on words. In other codex, other of those passages of Matthew, Barabbas, Bar means son, Abba means father, son of the father. As a revolutionary, he was Jesus Barabbas, the false son of the father. Jesus, the meek one, was the true son of the father, and yet they chose the false son of the father, only later to realize it was he who was spit upon, insulted, mocked, cursed, beaten, and crucified, who was the true son. We'd be able to sing Hosanna, and hallelujah when Easter time comes. But all of that, that prefigurement, the new Moses leading us to a promise, the new Adam to a new paradise, a new creation. And even in that Barabbas, how he, the false son of the father, they instinctively turn to in sin, and even in a cynical way would say, let his blood be on us and on our children, later turn to a prayer, we would all want that redeeming blood that flowed from his side, be on us, redemptive Lord. You died for us and poured out your blood. May it be upon us and our children, for in that we are redeemed and through the water of baptism. But I'll end with this as well. 
there's a beautiful account when he yells out, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani. A lot of us can be kind of troubled thinking, is he in total despair or just this close of total despair? Was it the total emptying? It was. But once again, like all the other parts of the Passion, even that is the fulfillment of Scripture. If you go to Psalm 22, the Psalms are attributed to King David. King David, almost in a sense of God abandoning him and his people, that kingship of David, a title like Christ, would be attributed to Jesus. But it would be his words, not in just a metamor metaphorical sense, but it would bring to fulfillment, my hands and my feet have been pierced. You can count all my bones. But that psalm ends in a triumphal way that others all, even the families of the nations, the Gentiles, all will be drawn to the truth and to that kingdom of God, the new Jerusalem. And in fact, in the gospel, notice how afterwards the centurion and the soldiers, rather than say he's claiming or that he's yelling out that he's being abandoned or forsaken, look at that movement of faith. And even the centurion asks, accepts that truth, truly, this was the Son of God, brought to faith, and then not the false Son of the Father, but in a moment of faith, not thinking that this one's yelling out that he has been abandoned, but turned in faith and realized, truly, this was the Son of God. May that be us being drawn once again through Holy Week. May God bless you always. Amen. We now turn to our Lord, and as God's children, together let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Turning to our Lord on this Passion Sunday, we present our prayers to him with Christ to intercede for us. Lord, for all of your people, near and far, for all of those whom our Lord made that triumphal entrance to Jerusalem and died for, may all be drawn closer to you, we pray to the Lord. Lord, we pray for all of those whom you have called to be shepherds of your people, from the successors of the apostles, our Holy Father, and for all of those, grant them the grace necessary to fulfill that role in leading and guiding your people and offering the sacraments for them, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all civil leaders and elected officials, grant them the gifts of the Spirit and wisdom and knowledge to care for the people, especially in these difficult times, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all the sick and those affected by the COVID-19 virus, but also all those who suffer in other various ways and some who even suffer at the hands of other people. Lord, for all of those who suffer, send your healing grace and comfort, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all first responders, and those who treat the least of our brothers and sisters, as well as those who are seeking and find, to try and find a cure 
and to help in these times, we pray to the Lord. We offer a prayer, Lord, in this Holy Week for all of those who will be received into full communion and all of those who are preparing for any of the sacraments. Bless them by your grace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, we include all of those whom you are calling to a vocation or missionary activity or service. We pray to the Lord for all of our families, our immediate and extended families, for our parish families, for our communities. May we be as your family, Lord, attentive to you, remaining close and united. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all Christendom, all of those, who strive to follow you even of different faiths and backgrounds may we be drawn into one in the mystery of Christ we pray to the Lord we pray for all of those who have passed from this life Lord welcome them to that heavenly banquet that they might share that banquet of heaven and the communion of Saints we pray to the Lord for all the intentions you hold in the silence of your hearts we pray to the Lord. Lord, we present our prayers to you, beginning Holy Week and recalling the passion of our Lord and the fulfillment of all of sacred scripture and salvation history. We are part of that. Recognize us as your faithful children following Christ to the cross and then enjoying and celebrating his resurrection. May we one day share in the celebration of heaven Please consider all of our prayers and answer them according to your divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. The mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condem condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
in all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Turn the light to us, receive it. And receive from every body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy, be for me protection in mind and body and the healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. communion antiphon. Father, if this chalice cannot pass without my drinking it, your will be done. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, 
so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. Before thee I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer us. Amen. As Holy Week goes on, we still have more confession times this afternoon, Sunday afternoon from 3 to 5. We also have confessions Monday morning, Tuesday morning, and Wednesday morning from 8.30 to 9.30. And then again Monday and Tuesday evening from 5.30 to 7, 5.30 to 7. And then on Wednesday night, the usual time, 7, until there are no more penitents. So that's Monday this afternoon, 3 to 5, and then Monday in the morning and evening, Tuesday, Monday morning and evening, and Wednesday morning, and then in the evening, 7, until there's no more. Also coming up, the Triduum, Holy Thursday, will be at 7 p.m., Good Friday service at 3 p.m., the Easter Vigil at 8 p.m., and then Easter Sunday at 9 will be live streamed, but you could watch it anytime Easter Sunday. Know of our prayers. Father Brandon and I continue to keep you all in our prayers. God bless.